Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are talking about growing up spiritually, and we're talking about the characteristics of a spiritually mature person. This is the third stage of the spiritual growth series that we've been talking about. Stages of spiritual growth. This is the third final stage. It is the mature Christian, the adult, spiritually adult or spiritually mature person. And yesterday, before we closed the program, we were talking about the third characteristic of a mature Christian, spiritually mature. And remember, spiritual maturity does not necessarily correspond to physical age and maturity. You can be physically mature, physically an adult. You could be even 60 or 70 years old physically and be a spiritual baby. You could be born again for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, be a Christian, and still be a baby spiritually because it does not come with age. Maturity does not come with age. Maturity does not come with time. Maturity comes only by putting into practice the word of God, renewing the mind and crucifying the flesh. And so a um, number three characteristic we mentioned as we were closing yesterday A mature Christian is conforming to the likeness of Christ. A mature Christian is conforming to the likeness of Christ. That's even the definition of a mature son. A mature son is looking like, talking like, and acting like our Heavenly Father. And so we looked at two scriptures, Romans 8, 29, which says, For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he, the son, Jesus, might be the firstborn among many brothers. So Jesus is the firstborn among many brothers. God foreknew, meaning he knew ahead of time who would receive him by faith. It's not it's God's will for everyone to be saved, but everybody has a free choice. And a free will to choose or not to choose Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God knew ahead of time who would choose, who would receive Jesus, who would believe. And those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. So we are predestined to be conformed to the likeness of Jesus Christ, who is the image of the father. And he said that several times. That's Hebrews one, three. He is the exact image of the father and also Colossians and in other places. And then we also read yesterday, second Corinthians three, 18, second Corinthians three, 18 says we, and we who with unveiled faces, all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory. Or as the King James Bible says from glory to glory, which is a reference to levels, levels of glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Or from the spirit of the Lord. Now back to the beginning of this verse. We who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory. Now the unveiled faces is a reference to Moses. Who would veil his face. When he. When the glory was subsiding. After he was in the presence of God. On Mount Sinai. He would come out to the people and then when the glory subsided, he would veil his face. And so this is a reference to Moses, who actually when Moses was in the presence of God, he was unveiled before God. His face was unveiled before God. And that is a reference to us also being like him. We can Stand before God, look on the Lord in his word. We don't see him physically, but in his word and in our hearts, we see, we look upon him and then 
we reflect his glory just as Moses did. But we don't veil our faces. And we are being transformed. This is the metamorphosis process. And it is a continual lifelong process as long as we are in the earth, in the body. And so it's not a one-time thing. It's not something that you do one day and you're finished. But we are being transformed into his likeness from glory to glory, the King James says, and that's going from level to level to level, one level of glory to another level of glory to another. Or as another translation says, with ever increasing glory, the glory is the manifested presence, power and goodness of God. It's the light of God, the power of God, the goodness of God. And we are to reflect his glory. And the more we are transformed into his image so that we are crucifying the sinful nature and more and more looking like him, talking like him and acting like him, then we are receiving more glory. More glory comes with more Christ likeness. More glory comes with more Christ likeness. And so we are being conformed to the likeness of Christ, but a mature Christian is one who has already taken a lot of, of strides in looking like God, talking like him, acting like him. They are at a place of maturity where their spirit is ruling their flesh and their soul. Their spirit is ruling their soul and, and flesh. And then let's go on. Number four, a, a, a characteristic of spiritual maturity. Number four, a mature Christian grows and has grown in godly character. It's all back to the likeness of the character of God. Let's go to Colossians chapter three, Colossians three verses 12 through 17 Colossians 3 12 to 17 therefore is God's chosen people that's us the church holy and dearly loved beloved clothe yourselves notice again anytime there is a commandment in the New Testament to do something yourself God will not do it for you. God will not do for you what he told you to do. Humble yourself. He will not humble you. Crucify your flesh. He will not crucify you. Purify yourself. He will not purify you from the things from the sin. You do it. And now we read clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, Gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. This comes back to the first, foremost, and primary characteristic it is love. Love is unselfish. Love is humble. Love forgives. Love overlooks the faults of others. And verse 15, let's keep reading Colossians 3.15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ, that's the word of God. We're back to the word of God again. Dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Verse 17. And whatever you do, whatever, whether in word or deed, 
Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So we see here the growth of godly character. Let's go also to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. 4 through 8. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. That's the word of God again. We're back to the word. Back to the word of God. So that through them, through the word of God, you may participate in the divine nature. It is through the word of God you participate in the divine nature. You take on God's nature by the word of God. And escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. It's by the word of God you escape corruption and destruction caused by evil desires. Verse 5. For this very reason... Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to goodness, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, growing in them, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you grow in these things, remember, it is exercising. Practice is exercising. Exercising is practicing. And if you practice and exercise in these qualities, you will increase in them and they will keep you. For one, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then go to Second Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. Second Peter three eighteen says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. So this is grow in the grace and grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. So this is growing in knowledge, growing in grace. In Jesus Christ, it is growing in godly character. Then let's go on to another one. Characteristic number five of a mature Christian. A mature Christian, number five, controls his tongue, tongue. Say tongue. You know, this is so major. And this is where most people fail. And the Bible even says so. It's where most people fail is in the tongue. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven. Proverbs seventeen twenty seven. A man of knowledge, and let's apply it to maturity, uses words with restraint. A man of knowledge, and we will say with ma- spiritual maturity uses words with restraint. And another place we read earlier when we talked about babies and children, it is a fool who speaks a lot because in, in the, in the, in the, when words are many, the Bible says in Proverbs, when words are many, sin is not absent. Sin is not absent in a lot of words. Why? Because in a lot of words, there will be something wrong. In a lot of words, unless you're just edifying, exhorting, and and sharing the word of God only. But otherwise, in a lot of words, something wrong will be said. There will be either criticism, judgment. There will be pride, boasting. There will be fault finding. There will be negativity or fear or worry or doubt, all of which are sin. So a man of wisdom uses words with restraint. Few words and less sin. The less you talk, the less you sin. So a wise person keeps a guard over his mouth and over his lips. And we talked about that when we talked about the law of the creative 
power of words. The creative power of words. We talked about the tongue. We talked about the, the law of creative power of words that what you say by faith, whether you are saying something positive or negative, if you believe it and are convicted of it in your heart, you are releasing creative power. And we talked about the tongue being controlled, putting a guard over your lips. A mature Christian puts a guard over his lips and speaks little. A baby Christian, a foolish Christian, has his mouth unguarded and speaks a lot. And when words are many, sin is not absent. But a man of knowledge and wisdom and maturity uses words with restraint. And then back to James chapter 1, James one nineteen says, My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be, one, quick to listen. You know, most people are slow to listen. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. A lot of people practice this verse in reverse. They are slow to listen, quick to speak, and quick to get angry. But you should obey the verse, which is the opposite. Slow, I mean, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And chapter 1, James 1, verse 26. Verse 26, if anyone considers himself religious. Now, we've talked about this. That actually would refer, today we would use the word spiritual. If you consider yourself to be a spiritual person. A mature person, if you consider yourself spiritual and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, a tight rein, a guard using words with restraint. If he does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself. He's self-deceived and his religion or his spirituality is worthless. It's of no value if you don't keep a rein on your tongue. If you don't keep a rein on your tongue, your spirituality is worthless. And James chapter 3, verse 2, 3 2 says, If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man. And remember, we've said before this word perfect is not meaning flawless. It means mature, full grown and developed mature. So if anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is mature. So the more mature you are, the less at fault you will be in anything you say. What you say will always be guarded and with restraint So you say what is good and right, beneficial and helpful to others. Which takes us to the next point, number six. Number six, a mature Christian talks about spiritual things. You know, when you get around your friends, what do you talk about with them? What do they talk about with you? Are you always talking about natural things? Are you talking about the latest movies or the latest TV shows or the football game or sports? Or is your conversation more often about spiritual things, the word of God, churches, messages that you've listened to, preaching that is? church services, the presence of God, revelation that you've received from the Lord. Do you fellowship with your friends about natural things or spiritual things? Well, the more spiritually mature you are, the more the spiritual things have interest and priority in your life. So this again is an, is the aspect of priorities. Priorities. The things of the world are less important Football games and movies and television shows, 
these things are less important. And actually, what's more important to you is, did you hear brother so-and-so preaching that great message? Did you hear the pastor? Did you go to that meeting? I just received this revelation from this verse. And you're eager to share the spiritual revelations, the spiritual things that you're getting from God with your friends. It, and they, if, the, and you choose then, you have to have friends who are just as spiritually mature or just as spiritually hungry as you are. And they're excited also about the word of God. They're excited about the revelation from the word. They're excited about going to church services and meetings. Did you go to the last seminar? Oh, wasn't that powerful? Didn't we have a great time? And to share, did you get that revelation? Oh boy, that was great. And to share the spiritual things with each other. Mature Christians who love God and prioritize God and his word will enjoy fellowshipping with each other, talking about spiritual things more than natural things. Because it's where their heart is. Where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And those are the things that are treasured to them. That's where their interests are. That's where their hunger is. They're no longer hungry in pursuing the natural things. Although, of course, we go to a, a, a game or a movie or watch a show once in a while, but those things aren't important anymore. What's important is what we are hearing from God, what we're getting from God, what we're learning and sharing it with each other. Spiritually mature Christians share spiritual revelations with each other. And the focus of their conversation is more about the spiritual than the natural things in their lives. Let's get some scripture. Psalm 71, verse 8. Psalm 71, 8. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. So what do you talk about? You praise God and you declare the splendor, the goodness, and the greatness of God throughout the day. You're sharing with your friends, oh, God did this for me. God did that for me. Glory to God. Psalm 145. 145 verses 11 and 12. They, that's the people of God, will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. So you tell about the goodness of God, the glory of God, the works of God, the mighty deeds of God in your life. In other words, what God has done for you. You give your testimony. Hallelujah. And Luke 24, this is after the resurrection of Jesus. And the two men were walking on the road to Emmaus and Jesus joined them and walked with them. And as they were going to Emmaus, they were walking along the road, talking to each other about all the things that had happened. And then in Luke 24, verses 31 and 32, they were sitting at the table when Jesus broke bread and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Notice their hearts were burning when the word of God was being talked about, when the scriptures were being talked about. Spiritually mature Christians and those who are coming into spiritual maturity are loving the word and they love talking about the word and the things of God and the things of the spirit of God with each other and sharing with each other. Praise the Lord. And first Corinthians two thirteen says, this is what we speak, not in words taught us by human w- wisdom, but in words taught by the spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. This is what we speak. The spiritually mature Christians are speaking spiritual truths in spiritual words with one another. And of course, you break it down simply when you share with a younger Christian, a baby Christian. And when you're witnessing to others, your whole life becomes a witness because you are a light because God is filling your life and the word of God is coming out of your heart in abundance. Remember what is in your heart in abundance is what comes out out of the overflow of the heart. The mouth speaks. 
Matthew 12, 34. Matthew 12, 34. For one place, it's also in other Gospels. For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever is in your heart in abundance, it's what you love. It's what you're seeking after. That's what's going to be coming out of your mouth. We can know exactly what's in your heart. We can know. Everybody around you can know what's exactly what's in your heart. Why? It comes out of your mouth. It's what you talk about all the time. And what are you talking about all the time? Are you talking about spiritual things? Then that means if are you talking about the word of God? That's what's in your heart in abundance. If that's what's coming out your mouth. But if you're per, a person who's always talking about the latest uh, athletic game, the sports scores and who's above who, or if you're talking about the latest movies, TV shows, or the latest fashions, what's in your heart in abundance is going to come out of your mouth. And the priorities of your life are what is in your heart in abundance. And if you are making spiritual things, the word of God and the things of God, the things of the spirit, going to church, going to services, getting revelation knowledge as a priority in your life, those things will be in your heart in abundance and they will come out your mouth. You will talk about them with your friends. Amen. Uh, Matthew twelve thirty five says the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. What's good is in your heart is going to come out. But what's bad in your heart is going to come out your mouth. So a mature Christian is loving the things of God and it comes out of his mouth all the time. And he shares about them and talks about them with his friends. Now we're out of time again. Join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.